fazendo um filme. Well, the main thing that I was trying to convey today is just, uh, and in Cachoeira and Salvador too, was how uh, the use of sound has changed and that there are, I was saying three, you know, if we had more time, I probably would say four uh, times when the change was big. The 30s, when sound first became available. Uh, the 60s, when synchronous sound first became available in an easy way. The 80s, when uh, sound was combined with a much more expansive idea of what documentary was, like the Thin Blue Line. And I would say today, meaning the OOs, the, two, the new millennium, the 2000s, uh, with all of the ways in which the digital image and sound are again giving us a, a, a richer and more complex set of possibilities. Uh, with a digital, with a cell phone, sound recording is very elementary and much of the effect of a film like uh, People I Could Have Been comes from a soundtrack that's mixed later in Tehran also where the, the uh, rap group was mixed later to go with the images. Uh, quality of sound in digital uh, with home devices like cell phones can be a problem, but the high quality is extraordinary. Uh, with digital means, you can get sound that is unbelievable, uh, almost literally unbelievable, <laughs> but uh, exceptionally good sound. So, and the systems that are available now for reproducing it, THX and Dolby and the others, you know, there's just uh, enormous possibility for a very rich, uh, what I would call sensory environment with high quality, you know, digital at the high end, using very high quality images, very high quality sound. Uh, you can create a very experientially rich uh, form of uh, encounter for the audience. I'd say the ironic view with documentary is one that is making mischief. And the filmmakers who use it are out to, in most cases, have fun in some way.